All right, we're going to take a look at uh, worksheet two, uh, problem one. It says there's a 12,500 kilogram railroad car rolling along a level track at a speed of four and a half meters per second when it collides with a second one that was stationary. Um, it says the two cars are going to, and the second one has a mass of 24,700 kilograms. The two cars are going to lock together, and so they'll move together afterwards. Now, we recognize that as being what we call a perfectly inelastic collision when they hit and stick and move together afterwards. Uh, part A, determine the final speed of the two cars after the collision, and then find the change in the kinetic energy. So here we go. Uh, start with the sketch. So I'm going to say, okay, I've got two railroad cars. Right? And now this one's heavier. Okay? Um, I'm going to call them A and B, right? Okay? I'm going to tag these guys. So we're going to say that uh, here's car A, here's car B, right? It says, uh, I know that the mass of A was 12,500 kilograms, and the mass of car B was 24,700 kilograms. Okay, uh, let's see here. Car A is moving along at four and a half meters per second. Uh, Calling that positive, let's identify right away. Okay, now they're gonna hit, they're gonna lock together. So we're gonna have our before picture, and we'll have our after picture. When they hit and lock, they're gonna move together afterwards. So here's going to be A and B moving together afterwards. We're trying to find this final velocity. All right. So that's it. That's it. That's the setup. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do a conservation momentum when it's a collision, right? And I'm going to say, uh, let's see, our system, we better make the system be both cars, right? Because we don't know anything about the force in between them or the duration. So trying to calculate an impulse would be tricky. If I do a combined system, I don't have an outside horizontal impulse. Um, and so that horizontal momentum will stay the same. Okay, and again, momentum's a vector. We just worry about each axis independently, right? So I'm doing the horizontal axis here. So uh, here we go. System is gonna be carts A and B. So F delta T is delta P. And because it's A and B, Right? Again, we're saying uh, there is no outside impulse in the horizontal axis. The force between the cards is inside the system. It would be equal and opposite impulses on both cards. Delta P, that will be the change in the momentum of A and the change in the momentum of B. I can go ahead and put in my equation for momentum for each one. And so you say, so this will be, uh, well here, we'll, we'll separate it out first. Momentum of A final minus momentum of A initial, plus the momentum of B final minus the momentum of B initial. Are any of these terms zero? And you say, yeah, this cart starts from rest. The starting speed of cart B was zero. And so that means that this term whoop, is gonna drop out. So I just have three terms. Now we'll put in P equals MV for each one, right? And if I do that, it's gonna be what? Uh, mass of A, you see velocity of A final? The thing is, afterwards they move together. So I'm just going to say mass of A velocity final. It's the same velocity for both, right? Uh, minus mass of A velocity of A at the start, plus mass of B. And again, I could say velocity of B final, but it's the same as the velocity of A so A final. So I'm just going to call it B final. All right. I am trying to find this B final guy. Okay. But I do know the values for the mass of A, the mass of B, and the starting speed of A. I know those things. I can just plug and chug through at this point. Um, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and put our values in. Um, uh, should I rearrange the equation first? I'll rearrange the equation first. Okay, I'm just going to continue uh, over here, if that's okay, because I kind of ran out of space there. So I'm going to move this term to the other side. And then I've got MV final plus MB fi MA final plus MB final. Well, that's just MA plus MB times B final. I can move the MA plus MB to, to the denominator here. Mass A, velocity of A at the start, divided by the combined mass is that final velocity. Put my values in. So this will be uh, 12,500. Okay, times the velocity at the start, 4.5, divided by 12,500 plus 24,700. If I punch that in my calculator, let's see what we get. Ink. 
careful with the parentheses in the denominator. I got 1.512 meters per second for the velocity at the end, that final, that the final at the end. Ta -da. Okay, so that was part A. Okay, part B asks, find the change in the kinetic energy of the system. Okay, and so uh, the change in kinetic energy, you say, okay, well, delta K then, change in kinetic energy, yeah. Um, that'll be my final minus my initial, yeah. Okay, and you say, I've got kinetic energy in, at the end, it's just gonna be one half mv squared. Well, the mass here, it's the combined mass. They're both moving together here. Making like one big object moving with that final velocity squared. That's the final minus the starting kinetic energy. Well, at the start, this guy was sitting still. He had no kinetic energy. It's just the kinetic energy of this guy. One half mass of a velocity of a at the start squared. Right? Just using my kinetic energy formula, one half mv squared, okay? Okay, and I know all these values. I, the V final is what I solve for uh, over here. I got all the values you can just plug in. 1 half, 12,500 plus 24,700 times that 1.512 squared minus 1 half the mass of A, 12,500 uh, times the velocity of A at the start, 4 and a half squared. Okay. I'm just trying to plug in the calculator, right? The change in kinetic energy. Okay, these big heavy things moving, there's probably going to be a lot of energy involved there. Uh, 0.5 times... So what I got here, again, this is final minus initial. I ended up getting a negative value. I got a negative 84,040 joules about, okay? And so you say, hey, what's going on there? You say, why is it coming out to be negative? That means the ending is less than the starting, right? The change, I lost some kinetic energy. Where'd that kinetic energy go? You say, hey, this collision, the hit and stick, there's gonna be some vibration, there's going to be some energy going into other forms as things, uh, you know, why are they sticking together afterwards? Is there something like a, on, a, on, a, on a real train, there'd be like a coupler that's kind of like spring powered that I'm expanding, expanding the springs and stuff. Energy's going into other forms is what I'm getting at. Um, rearranging things, maybe things are crushing and crumpling together. The point is, energy's going into other forms other than just kinetic. Most likely, a lot goes into... Um, Connect into like kind of vibrations, thermal energy in that collision. Um, this is what we call a perfectly inelastic collision uh, when things hit and stick. You will remember inelastic collisions are collisions where kinetic energy is not conserved by definition. That means kinetic energy is not the same after as before. Some of it goes in other forms. Mostly I would think it would go into thermal, but it's true that those couplers uh, might be kind of like spring power. It comes in, they crush, and it pushes these springs apart. There's energy stored up in those springs now. Uh, in those couplers, um, perhaps. Or maybe I'm just thinking of toy train sets. Uh, but anyway, but you get the idea. Um, this energy goes in other forms. Uh, that is the deal. All right, so that's part B. And that's problem one.